Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear students, uh, today we are going to discuss the uh, one part of the introductions into the parasympathomimetic active drugs, or they are called also parasympathomimetics. Okay, so today we are going to discuss the uh, two most important receptors activated by these drugs, which are ligand-gated ion channels and G-protein-coupled receptors. Uh, so the allows to differentiate between different types of receptors, they bisect the mechanism uh, controlling ligand-gated ion channels, and discuss the mechanisms of signal from production to G protein coupled receptors. Okay, so uh, to the receptor family, we have four classes of receptors. Four classes: ligand gate ion channels, G protein coupled receptors, kinase linked receptors, and nuclear receptors. Uh, number one, uh, please pay attention. Okay, number one, this is the cell. Okay, this is a cell membrane. Okay, so we have, if you notice, how many cell membrane receptors, cell mem or membrane bound receptors? How many? Three, right? One, two, three. How many nuclear or intracellular receptors? Only one receptor, one type of receptor. So, uh, so we are not going to discuss these two receptors. We are going to only focus on ligand gate ion channels and. G protein uh, coupled receptors. Okay, ligand gate ion channels are called the ionotropic receptors because uh, they deal with passage of ions on these channels upon activation of these channels by binding of ligand. And G protein coupled receptors they are called metabotropic receptors also uh, because they uh, they don't involve uh, ion channel opening, rather they activate G protein. And this G protein will activate uh, subsequent second messengers. Okay, so let us delve into details about the uh, ligand gate ion channels, the first class. Okay, so this is the ligand gate ion channel. Just look at it. So this is the, the channel. So there is a kink here with these alpha helices. Okay, they are making a gate, so it's closed. Okay, and upon the binding of the ligand, in this case, if it is nicotinic. Acetylcholine receptors, it's acetylcholine, and uh, the receptor itself is, uh, is nucleic acetylcholine receptor. If it is a GABA A receptor, this ligand will be GABA. Okay, please remember GABA A, GABA A, okay, GABA A, because there is GABA B, which are uh, G protein coupled receptors. Uh, so, uh, upon binding of the uh, agonist, this will cause confirmation change in the receptor and this will lead to opening of the ion channel. They are the fastest synaptic uh, channels, okay? They are, the involved, they are involved in the fastest uh, synaptic events in the nervous system, okay? And which the neurotransmitter like acetylcholine. Act on a post synaptic membrane in, uh, which has the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, okay, or in the muscle, and transiently increase its permeability to particular ions, okay. Uh, in this case, if it's nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, it will uh, allow the passage of sodium through this channel, okay. And if it is GABA, it will allow the passage of chloride. Again, another view of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is acetylcholine here binds to the Binding site on the ligand gate and channel allow the passage of sodium. Okay, I hope this is clear. Uh, next, the largest family of receptors. The largest, the biggest family of receptor is G protein coupled receptor. Again and again and again. We said in the previous slide, ligand gated. So they are uh, ion channels that are gated by binding of ligand, right? Here, G protein coupled receptor. They are receptors that are coupled to G protein. Okay, just keep this in mind until we discuss further, inshallah. Okay, they are uh, they, they, why they are called G protein because they bind guanine nucleotide GDP, guanosine diphosphate, and guanosine triphosphate. They are families. These G proteins are families uh, like GS, GI, and GQ, as we, we will discuss later. 
okay? Examples of these receptors, okay? As I said, it's, it's a huge family, right? It's a huge family. So uh, there in the ligand gate ion channel, we said what? Nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, right? Right? So what's remaining? Muscarinic acetylcholine receptor. So this part of the parasympathetic nervous system is uh, the receptors are uh, muscarinic acetylcholine receptor. The whole sympathetic nervous system receptor, the adrenergic receptors, the adrenoceptors, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, all are uh, uh, G protein coupled receptors. Okay, and glutamate receptors and GABA B receptors. Please remember, okay, GABA B, GABA A is ligand gated ion channel, uh, GABA B is G protein coupled receptors. They actually are fast, but remember, uh, ligand gated ion channels are the fastest. Okay, uh, so let us uh, get into the more details of the structure. Remember, we have two things. Please, please, please. Remember, we have two things. We have the receptor itself, and we have the G protein. Please, let go, don't get confused with these things. This is the receptor, the one that will bind to the ligand or the ions. Okay, the G protein will come later. Okay, so let's first talk about the G protein, the G PCR itself, the receptor itself. It consists of seven transmembrane alpha helices. This is alpha helices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And because it consists of seven transmembrane alpha helices, sometimes they are called it, they call it seven pass transmembrane domain receptor. Again, seven pass, P-A-S-S, transmembrane domain receptor, okay? Okay, look at this, uh, this, Zigzag form here. What this reminds you of? Like a snake, right? Like this is the head of the snake, and this is going, this is the body of the snake, and this is the tail of the snake, right? So that's why they call them serpentine receptors. Also, they are called serpentine receptors. So we have now three names for these receptors G protein coupled receptor, seven pass transmembrane domain receptors and serpentine receptor, okay? So again, so now we stop at the receptor. Then talk about the G protein. G protein consists of three subunits. The G protein consists of alpha, beta, and gamma, okay? Guanine nucleotide, which means GTP and GDP, binds to the alpha subunit. Beta, gamma subunits, they are, uh, you know, are involved in different signal transduction pathway, which is not discussed here. Okay, so let's focus only, please, on the alpha subunit. This alpha subunit also has GTPase activity, so it can stop the activity of the uh, G protein by converting the GTP into GDP. The G protein itself is called the molecular switch. Yes, molecular switch. So you have, uh, you know, in your room now, uh, you have electric switch. Okay, you turn on and off, right? On, the light is on, off, the room is dark, right? This is also on and off, but it's molecular. It's composed of protein, okay? And it's on when it is bound to GTP, guanosine triphosphate, and it's off when it's bound to GDP, guanosine diphosphate. Okay, I hope this is called a molecular switch. GTP on, GDP off. Okay, so quickly the agonist will bind to the receptor, which will be activated, and this will bind to G protein, which will be activated, uh, which means that it will, uh, GTP will bind and GDP will be displaced, and this will activate certain effector protein. Okay, let's go a little bit to a little bit more details. Okay, okay, so uh, the mechanism. Okay, number one. Binding of the agonist, so the agonist will bind to the receptor. The receptor will be converted from the resting state into the activated state. Okay, the receptor, when it's activated, will activate the G protein from the GDP status, which is off, inactive, into the GTP status, which is the, uh, uh, the active form. Okay, this in turn will activate the effector, okay, from the inactive status into effective. Uh, or uh, activated steps, okay? 
This will involve the, the this vector could be uh, enzyme, could be ion channel, as we'll see in the next slide, which is very important, extremely important. Okay, let us remember. Okay, we said before we have three families of G protein. We said I have that G protein coupled receptor. I have the G protein coupled receptor. Then I have the G protein itself. Okay, this is the G protein. This is a G protein coupled receptor. This is a G protein, G protein, G protein, G protein. Okay, we said three families, remember? Huh? G S, G I, and G Q. Okay, here they are. G S, G I, G Q. Okay, number one, I would like to draw your attention that this and this, this and this are coupled, identical, to make it easy for you. So please don't think they are different, they are completely identical, which means that ligand will bind to the receptor, the GPCR, GPCR will be activated, and this will activate the G protein from the GTP, instead of the GTP, to transient triphosphate. This will happen all over all of these uh, uh, four different types of receptors. Okay, so if it binds to the G, the, if the G protein is from the type GS, this will activate adenylate cyclase enzyme, which will convert ATP, adenosine triphosphate, into cyclic adenosine monophosphate, cyclic AMP. This will activate pro activate protein kinase. Protein kinase, as you know from the biology. Okay, kinase means an enzyme that will add phosphate, uh, organic phosphate group, okay? Will add phosphate group into certain proteins, okay? This will phosphorylate certain functional proteins. Example, like glycogenolysis, like glycolysis, calcium, and sugar activation. Okay, the second type is exactly like this, but the opposite way. Again, 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 okay, like a turbine, the receptor will be activated, GPCR will be activated, will activate that G protein into the activated status, which is the GTP, guanosine triphosphate. I, we said this identical everywhere. This will inhibit, this is GI. Please remember this uh, uh, mnemonic, okay, GI uh, inhibitory, GS stimulatory. GS, as you remember, just this stimulated adenylate cyclase and which uh, activated the conversion of ATP and cyclic AMP and so forth. And this one, GI uh, inhibitory, it will inhibit adenylate cyclase, which will inhibit the conversion of ATP and cyclic AMP and inhibit the phosphorylation of protein. Okay, so this is the opposite of this. The third category is GQ. GQ. Same thing, like at the bind receptor activated, this will activate G protein, GTP status. This will activate another enzyme. Here, adenylate cyclase, here it is phospholipase C. Phospholipase C, please remember C, okay? This will split PIP2, which is phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate, okay, into DAG, diacylglycerol, okay, uh, which will activate protein kinase C. So C, 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 okay. Uh, this will uh, lead to, uh, Activation of the cell in form of contraction of small muscle, uh, contraction of small muscle glandular dissipation, uh, and the other part to IP3 inositol triphosphate, which will uh, now the release of calcium, which will lead also to subsequent effects. So again, like in the mind, receptor activated, activate G protein. This will activate phospholipase C, which will split PIP2 into DAG and IP3. DAG will activate protein in C. IP3 will activate the release of calcium, and this will end up leading to contraction of small muscle and glandular secretion. The last one is the GPCR associated with sugar. GPCR, G protein coupled etc. associated with sugar. Okay, so this is a channel, just a channel. Okay, and uh, this type of uh, uh, GPCR is the same as we said before many times. Ligand bind receptor activated, which will activate the uh, uh, G protein into the GTP status. 
This will bind to a certain channel called GPCR straight channel and allow passage of ions and transmembrane ion movements. Okay, this will uh, be uh, example that is membrane action feature and homeostasis of cellular ions. Okay, so uh, as a recap, remember now in the um, uh, previous lecture we talked about membrane action, uh, the action potential, okay, membrane action potential. At that time, there we have voltage gated ion channel, voltage gated ion channel, right? Voltage gated ion channel. And just a couple of slides ago, we talked about ligand gated ion channels, which are channels that pass ions, but when certain ligand bind to this, this channel. And the third one is GPCR associated channel, which is it's part of the or type of the GPCR targets, which will are activated by binding the ligand receptor. G protein is activated, which allow uh, opening of this channel. Okay. Uh, uh, features of the G protein couple of things. Okay. Uh, some interesting features of this. We already talked about this. The G, the activation of the effector tends to be self-limiting. You remember this? You remember this one? Remember we said the alpha subunit of the G protein has GTPA's activity which will allow to stop or to put like a break on the activity. Why? Suppose now it is adrenaline, bind to beta receptor, beta one receptor in the heart. Now the heart rate increases, right? Cannot go on, on, on like that without any break? No, there has to be a certain break. This break here is alpha subunit of the, uh, the uh, GT based activity of the alpha subunit. So alpha subunit is the one that binds to the G yeah, the G protein, generally speaking, GDP or GTP, and it is also the one that has this break, which is called GTP. Second thing, second very interesting thing, okay. Opposite functional effects may be produced at the same cell type by GPCR. What? So G protein coupled receptor can, exer can exert opposite responses at one cell type? Okay, let us discuss that. Maybe I forgot, maybe I'm running out of memory, okay? So maybe I need to buy a SD card or whatever, okay? But I think my SD card is still running, it's still working, okay? So let's look here. Remember we have GI and GS, right? Right? So in the cardiomyocyte, just take it as an example, okay? The muscarinic receptors on the cardiomyocyte are uh, from the type GI-PCR, from the GPCR, it's GI, which means, as we said before, ligand bind to this muscarinic receptor, they are GI, okay? Uh, they bind to G protein as normal, okay? G protein will be activated, will be in the GTP, guanosine transfer status. We said this is similar, identical everywhere, but this GI will inhibit adrenaline activity, okay? And they will decrease the uh, amount of cyclic AMP. Look here, the opposite way. Uh, the uh, suppose adrenaline, here the ligand adrenaline, working on beta adrenosine, okay, or adrenergic receptors. This beta adrenergic receptors is from the type GS. This will be activated, will bind to G protein. G protein will be in the GTP status. This G protein, because it's GS, it will activate adenylate cyclase, which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. My smart students, I think they should have memorized uh, this mechanism, inshallah, okay? Okay, uh, this is just we are almost done, it's just for your info, just a little bit about some details. I said this is you for your info, you don't have to memorize that. So just see some applications of whatever we say. So suppose now it is the GS-PCR, okay, activated by the sympathetic nervous system, okay? Look here, this is the agonist, the uh, receptor is activated, G protein is activated from the GTP, GDP into the GTP status. It will activate adenylate cyclase, which compared to ATP and cyclic AMP. This will activate protein kinase from the inactive form into the active form, right? Okay, if it works on glycogen synthase, okay, glycogen synthase is inactive when it is phosphorylated. Okay, this will reduce glycogen synthesis. I don't need to synthesize glycogen when I'm under stress, when sympathetic nervous system activity is high. The second thing, uh, the opposite to that is lipase enzyme. It's inactive when it is deep but you add phosphate to it, 
it will be activated, will increase lipolysis, which is really needed during the times of stress and the uh, activation of sympathetic nervous system to fuel the muscle and uh, uh, the other tissue. Uh, the third thing, phosphorylase kinase enzyme, which will activate, increase, uh, again, it's inactive when it's dephosphorylated, but when it's phosphorylated, it's active. It's like, uh, like the, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, like the lipase enzyme. Okay, uh, uh, so it will uh, activate, end up activating, increase the glycogen breakdown. So now I'm breaking down glycogen into glucose, which can be used to fuel the tissues during the time of stress. Okay, the second thing is just the last thing. Just I said PIP2, DAG, IP3. We said this is the PIP2. This is the whole thing is a PIP2. This is the PIP2. It's a phosphate uh, dilinocytol uh, bisphosphate. Okay, we say DAG, the cell glycerol, this is the part that's DAG. Okay, and this is the part that is uh, inocytol triphosphate. Again, this is just for your info. You don't need to memorize this, but just to make it easy for you to imagine these things. I'm done, and uh, again, uh, please uh, uh, see this again. And please enjoy. If you can say, SpanLab, can be SpanLab already. Uh, please uh, watch this video at least three times and come up with any question, comment, suggestion, whatever you like on our uh, wonderful WhatsApp group. And inshallah, see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.